Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Ponce with Song Notes and a little entry in my practice log here where I'm working on Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones, right? Beautiful song, and I'd heard this a thousand times growing up, but I never really heard it until the last couple weeks and I've been listening to it and just really like hearing the layering of acoustic stuff going on. Awesome, awesome. You already know that though, so I'm going to cut right to the chase. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to have a whole lot of fun with just the first two chords that are using this song, right? It's G and it's A minor, okay? And you go back and forth. Now in the song you go back and forth, you're on G and then you do A minor and G again and then A minor and then back to G and then I think you go to a B minor, okay? But in this lesson, I'm just gonna show you the G and the A minor, but I'm gonna show you all these cool little riffs you can do while you're playing these to just really spice this up, okay? It's, it's a lot of fun you can have just by yourself whenever. You're just strumming those two chords casually. Yeah, there's, it's a sandbox full of toys. You can have so much fun. So I want to show you what I've, what I've put together here. And um, the notes and taps are everything I'm going to show you. You can find on playsongnotes.com. And there's also this PDF that I've written up for my lesson notes here. So uh, I make these for all my new lessons. And if you support me on Patreon for just three bucks a month, you get access to all my new PDFs that I make for every new lesson and all the ones I've made so far. So it's a great deal. Gotta check that out. But let's look at this here. So um, now let's talk about the lay of the land, okay? The, the, the territory we're gonna be playing in here. It's two measures, right? Four counts for each measure I'm gonna do. First measure is G, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna strum it. I'm gonna show you ways to strum it, but let's just two and three and four and a minor two and da 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 dee doo dee doo. Right? That last part of the A minor is where all the riffing is gonna happen, right? Those last two counts, the three E and the four E and the, and we go back to the G, okay? And we do whatever strumming we want, A minor, da -de -da -de -da -da -da, okay? That's where all the riffing's gonna be. So this is the sort of lay of the land, right? Just going between G and A minor. Now let's talk about strumming a little bit here. Um, the stones strum it like this, right? They have this down, down. over and over again. You do that pattern once for the G and once for the A minor and you repeat it all day long. Now, um, you could obviously do something else. If you want to keep it really simple, I would just do a down strum on each quarter note, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right? And you could just start with this. And you could definitely do the little riffs, right? Whatever strumming you want, maybe you want to add a, a little up strum on the, here's one, you do an up strum right before the three count and right before the one count. So that would be one and two and a three and four, a one and two and a three and four, a one and two, a three and four, a one, right? But most importantly, just Strum freely if you want. Feel the groove, stay in time, make the chord changes properly, obviously. But, you know, um, that's just a few ways you could strum it. I will say one thing I like to do as well is recommend that if you want to um, get some practice with this, we can do a strum with like a lead-in bass note. So on the one count, we're going to play just the bass note of the G, and then on the two count, we'll play the full G, okay? And repeat that on the three count and then the four count. So that would be one and two. Same for the A minor. And we'll, do, we'll add the riff again in a minute, but this is just for strumming, right? Sort of like just get that foundation set, right? And maybe you want to add a little bounce. Right? Just do whatever you will, whatever you feel like. So, okay, that's enough for strumming here. One last thing I want to show you before I get to these riffs, and that's how to spice up this G chord. Now normally you want to play a G, you know, by third fret, second fret, open, 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 third fret, okay? What I'm doing here though, is I'm sort of, lots of times I'm doing this two finger version of the G, where basically I'm doing my ring finger on the sixth string and my pinky finger on the first string, the high E string. Okay, now what's happening though is this fifth string 
I'm not pushing the string down. I am touching the string gently with this finger, but what that does is it deadens the string. So if I strum all six strings with my pick, okay, the only strings that are really making a, a nice sound are the sixth string, fourth, third, second, and first. The fifth string isn't really doing anything. And that's okay, right? We still get the G major sound, but what that does is it gives gives these two fingers some uh, flexibility and they can kind of come in and do this little flourish voice in here. That's a, that's a different song I'm getting into there, but you get the idea, right? This is commonly used in so many songs. So what you could do, for example, is one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. It's a nice little simple exercise where you're going from that G to this. This is like a C over G voicing, but I just have it here in my tab as like a G with a little star. It's a, the alternate voicing, right? But you can do all kinds of stuff with that voicing. And as you're improvising, you know, throughout this exercise and in general, all kinds of fun you can have, right? But this is really the, the voicing I want you to, to come away with is this G voicing. So now let's get to the riffs that we can play now that we have this lay of the land, right? We're gonna be on G for four counts and then A minor for four counts. So pick your strumming poison, however you wanna strum, that's cool with me. And let's look at these riffs here. Now, big picture, they look like this. And in these tabs, I'm only showing you the A minor because what's assumed is that you're gonna be on the G for four counts first, right? One, two, three, four. Then you start the A minor. And you go back to the G for four counts, right? So the riffs are always happening on the A minor. And they're always happening on the three count and after. And I'm just sort of cycling through the riffs here, right? Mix up my strumming. So let me fix that little error there. That's a taste of the riffs. Now let me go through these one by one. I'll show you how to play them. And um, you can take these as slow as you want. And you know, whenever you're just, again, mellowly going between the G and the A minor, these are good little, little riffs you can do. Okay, so this first one here, um, riff number one. This one, it captures that sound that you hear at the very beginning of Wild Horses on one of the second or third guitars, right? Now, I'm going to show you that little, this little thing up here in a minute, but this first riff is that same melody, just an octave lower. And this is very playable with a single person acoustic guitar. So let me talk about this. What's going on here? So if we're coming into this from an A minor, here's the key, the, the, the important thing to take note, is we basically want to keep our index finger on this second string first fret, where it is in the A minor, and we want to slide it up to the third fret of the second string, okay? And then we wanna put our um, middle finger, you could do your ring finger if you wanted, it doesn't really matter, on the fourth fret of the third string, okay? So, so that's basically the two note double stop we wanna play, right? Fourth fret of the third string and third fret of the second string. And we're gonna play that three times, one, two, three. And then we're gonna move that shape down just two frets, okay? The shape stays the same, right? Our fingers stay in formation like fighter jets and we're coming down here and then we're playing this double stop, right? And this is basically coming right out of the A minor chord, right? So you could actually move the whole A minor shape up. And then after that, we're gonna play the G. Now the G, I, what I like to do here is only play the thickest five strings of the G. So I want this B string, this second string, to be the highest note in pitch that is played. And what that does is it really hammers home that melody. That descending melody of these notes. Oops. Okay, that's sort of the suggested like melody. And when we keep this B string as the highest note in the G chord, it lets that note just sort of, you know, get a little, uh, we get a little, time in the spotlight, whatever you want the metaphor to be, right? So again, that riff is... So we're, we're bringing in those counts on the three, the 
the 1e, e, 1e, e, and the 2e, e, and the 3e, e, and the 4e. E. So, and the 4 and 1. 1e, one e, and the 2e, and the 3e, and the 4 and 1. Okay, counting and playing at the same time is tough, but basically, that's the sort of the, the, the rhythm you want to come in on, right? So, 1e, e, and the 2e, e, and So that's the first riff. It's a tougher one because you got two fingers going on there. Now the riff number two here is this. Okay. Now this one, I don't know if it's in Wild Horses per se, but it's using the same notes that all these riffs do basically. Um, this one, again, it's going to start on that, that C note of the A minor, the first fret of the second string. So our, our first two notes of this riff number two are going to be the this note and then Pull your finger off that string, play it again, and then we're just going to go second fret on the third string, open third string, and then play the second fret twice again. So three E and a four and then we go to the G. Now in this G, what I have tabbed out here is only playing the thickest four strings, and it's the same idea as before. So we want the highest note in pitch to be the continuation of that melody, right? note right there that's a G that note we want to be the, the the note that sounds the highest so if we strum those four strings only on the beginning of the G the first strum of the G it lets that melody sort of finish you know that phrase sort of finish then you can strum the full G okay let's do that one do that one a few times Something I'm doing when I'm playing this, I'm realizing, I want to explain it to you. When I'm playing that second fret on the, on the four count, I am letting my finger off the, I'm, I'm depressing my finger from the fretboard so that the sound stops. Stop. Right? Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but if I didn't do that, it would sound like this. Right? It would be sustained. The sound is going, I play it again, it's going again, and then I go to the G. And that's totally fine if you keep your finger pressed down, but I like to have that little like, dynamic perk of, of getting to that silence again. Because then when you come back, it makes, you know, it's just, I think silence and noise are, are things you want to have fun with, with contrasting when you play music. So again, uh, those last two plucks of the second fret on the third string, I am, I am playing it, then I'm depressing my finger, lifting it off the fretboard, but keeping it on the string, and that kills the sound. Okay, so that's riff number two. Now riff number three. This one, um, in my head, I think of this one as basically I am, I'm just using these two notes, right? My ring and my middle finger on my left hand. First two notes are just playing the third and fourth string respectively, right? Then I lift up my third string finger, my ring finger. So this is the, those first three notes. Get comfortable with those first. And then the next three notes are a bit easier because we're just playing the fourth string open second fret. My finger is already there, so it's take it off, put it back. And then just play open third string. So. Okay? And then on this one, when I go to the G, I just like to play the bass note, then come in with the full strumming. Let's do this one a few times. mistake right but you get the idea okay now let's go to riff four this one is starting to use just these same little building blocks again right in the a minor i'll 
do it a few times first. Now this one, what makes it unique compared to the other ones is when I play that uh, second note, it's uh, going from this second fret of the third string, this is an A, down to a G. I'm going to play the G and then kill the strings. I'm going to like hang on that silence for a second, right? Then I'm going to scoop back down. So. It's like a nice little mini call and response, kind of. Right? Feel it. Like, feel it like it's a phrase. Like, it's a, I mean, really, like, get, I don't know. It, it helps me. It's kind of, kind of imagine I'm physically moving, like, to impersonate that little phrase. I think that helps me just feel like I am I don't know, feeling the vibe of the, the melody. So again, but after that second note, I'm killing the strings again. Kill this killing it here by putting my right hand on the strings. Right? So G bass note, okay? So riff number five, again, it's more of the same here. A minor. So this is fourth string, open to second fret, open third string, back to second fret, fourth string, open fourth string, then, you know, the G bass note. Is it possible to silence the strings on this one? You can, but I don't think that works as well. You could add another note at the end there, right? Extend it by one. A little bit of improv there. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to include that one. I think that's sort of heard in the Rolling Stones version. And then finally, we have this last one here. The now this one, I'll say, I think the re what's really being played by one of the guitars in the album version is... Um, so we're going from 10th um, fret on the thinnest strings with, with 12. So we're doing double stops again, right? So 10 and 12 on the first and second string. Then you move that same shape, stay in formation, stay in formation, down two frets, 8 to 10, right? 8th fret, 10th fret. And then now, we're basically going to think of it this way. Do a D major shape, but up here on the 7th and 8th fret. Okay? 7, 8, 7. This is a G. These are the, this is a, a, a G triad. So, I think that's what's played on the album version. But when you're doing this by yourself, I find that you kind of want to get to the full strummy G. So what I do is just do... Let those two double stops lead me in. Okay? The tough part about this one is you have to jump from this A minor up to that 10th and 12th fret. So it's a good thing, take it slow. You don't want to lose your rhythm. So that's number six. So with all those riffs together, I think you're in a great place to take these, uh, practice them, play them. Even if you have no interest in wild horses, you can have a lot of fun just by playing these, you know, pick one or two, focus on them, or just sort of mix and match them. And then for extra credit, you can kind of make up your own, right? Because ultimately these are, all, these are all using like, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six notes. Um, and it's a nice uh, example of just, you know, playing within constraints. We're going to need to take six notes, we're just going to be going between two chords, and we can have a lot of fun, like, make a nice little groove going on. So again, the Rolling Stones, I mean, this is a great song. This part of the song is like 20 seconds long, and I just did a long-ass lesson on it, but you get the idea. Like, there's uh, a lot of nuance there, and um, 
You know, if you want to find out exactly what the Rolling Stones are playing, how each of their guitars are tuned, I think they have a 12-string guitar. I think they have another guitar that's in Nashville tuning, which means that the thickest four strings are all tuned up an octave. So it just gives it this really nice, bright sound. And um, yeah, it's, it's great. There's some cool live, uh, there's one, I'll put it in the, on my website, playsongnotes.com. There's a live version of this that the Rolling Stones did like in, a, in their studio. And it's just them sitting around. And it's, uh, you just can hear the, the nuance and the, the subtle, like just beautiful, elegant skill that's going on there. So that's where I'm going to leave you guys. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate this. Uh, look for my lesson on Wild Horses if you want to learn the full song. But hopefully this will give you something in the meantime. So uh, uh, that's it. This is David Potts. It's raining here in Austin. Uh, thanks to all of you who watched this far. Thanks to all of you who support me uh, through Patreon, through my tip jar, through leaving kind comments and emails. Uh, it all, it all goes a long way and it, it means a lot. So thanks all. Have a good night. Bye-bye.